Hello people and welcome to part 5 of the tutorial. So in the last one we started looking at what we were going to do for handling these units here. And in this one what we're going to do is start scripting some of the stuff for it so that we um can have events happen and things like that. I'm just going to close some stuff out here to make life a little bit easier on me. And I know I really should have done this before um, starting up, but you'll just have to forgive me. So, we are going to need to start with this set. We also need to fix a small bug that I noticed I messed up slightly. So if we mouse over set default tanker, we'll notice it's a string with the tanker name, not a um, feed to this. So there's two ways we can handle this. If we could either just put the thing in the actual name in, or we can go group. I believe under group we can actually do a get name, I think, get unit name. Um, yeah, so get name identifiable. Right? So, and it will return either a string or nothing, right? So what we can do is this, set default tanker to that. And it's just going to get the name and populate that as it should. So with that done, let's start looking at what we want to do for this group. So. Obviously we want it that the um, red four ha blue four has to come in, they have to start killing these units off. We might want to have it so that there's a strike target or something down here, an actual headquarters building that if it's destroyed then any reinforcements that we decide that we're going to have coming across no longer get sent across. Um, and we'll look into that in a minute. Um, there's some new scripting that uh, Pikes, uh, Pikey uh, brought out recently um, with the help of Funky Frankie over at the Moose side of things that could really, really help with scripting stuff you can actually now work out if a with what he's done you can work out if one of these buildings has been destroyed which allows for some really really fine mission tuning but for the moment we want to basically have it so that if these units are not alive then we're going to have a Blue. Um, so if this both sets are down, we're going to have a blue helicopter spawn in down here, and it'll fly up until it reaches this zone, and it'll drop off some troops. Basically, it'll activate and do that. Otherwise, we're going to have another group, small group down here, and when this group's destroyed, we're going to tell. Uh, tell it to basically drive from here to here and then hold um, and I'm hoping that if it holds somewhere in here with just this um, group here in thing that it'll start creating a little bit of a firefight meaning that you need to start asking you know you basically need to to pay attention because they're going to be under attack um, and the like um, 
it's, uh, it's wish there was a way we could actually adjust the accuracy more on these units so because ground fights sometimes can be over very very quickly the other thing we're going to do is if this unit's destroyed then a bunch of infantry we're going to have a bunch of infantry come out and appear here so we'll script we'll start on the scripting for that or actually the creation of the units for that so first off we want to put down our infantry unit so we're going to grab this we're going to make certain we're on Iran put this down and we're going to change this to infantry we don't have a lot of options for Iran on the infantry weirdly you'd think that actually give some proper options but yeah no can do so instead in this one we're going to uh, we're not going to put down that many with RPGs we're going to put down some soldiers and surgeons we're going to call this third infantry I mean, these guys will be here, um, they'll be spawned in, but we're going to basically cluster them around an area, and when this group's destroyed, we're going to send them a command that tells them to come down to this point here, and basically hide, start hiding in the, in, in the buildings and the like, so that they can um, start fight, you know, so that they can be a pain in the butt to anybody coming through. Um, so we're going to do 20 infantry. Delete that. And then we're going to put we're going to come midway and we're going to change this to an RPG dude. And this guy to an RPG dude, that just gives a couple of RPGs in there. Um, we're going to add another three here. Change some of these back to um, ins standard insurgents and the like. But then we're going to jump to here, we're going to go air defense. We're going to come down here, and we should. We've got these guys, the man pads, and we're going to set a couple of these guys to be man pads. So that one, and. This guy is apparently already a man pad, but he's not displaying. Oh, because they're spawned in up here. That's why. So you need to come in. Then. Okay. Yeah. This is giving us two guys with man pads. So now we need to find unit one. So we're going to move unit 1 down and we're going to have him uh, we'll cluster them around this building for the moment.
So this, this uh, is the 3rd Infantry Group, they're going to sit here, they're going to be told that they can um, be weapons free and auto, plus we want them to disperse if they come over fire, under fire, and they'll disperse for um, four minutes. Now, this is all we're going to do, despite the fact we want them to move down here. If this group's destroyed, we can script that. Though, scripting the actual position they come into when they get there is a little annoying, because um, basically to do so you really need a push to do a push point to to it, which we can do. We can do a trigger push, I believe. So if we come over, look at our group commands. Um, we can have a look and see if we can push target. If not, we can actually um, what we can do if we can't do it this way is we can get the flag, we can set a, u a flag value and based on it use some of the data in DCS itself to Um, cause it. I think it's yeah. So we could do a push target, so, which is basically push go to um, go to waypoint two if we wanted to. But instead, we're just going to when we do it, we're just going to basically tell it to um, route itself down there. And move to a wait to a x y coordinate. So, how do we do that? So, what we want to do is this group. So, Ninth Armored Division. We're going to do what we're doing now. And so, we're going to go Iran. Run knights. Oh, we'll just do knight equals group. Find by name. Uh, yeah, we should say call that one because we've got two of them. And all right, knights armored equals group. Find by name. And I believe we'll find that this other one is the same name. I like that. So we're going to store those two, and we're going to store Iran inf equals group. Find by name. We're going to store the infantry group here. Third infantry. So we now have those stored. Now, what we're going to look for in this is for an event like what we have up here, where um, where we're looking for if it's ki for if it's killed or hit or the like. So we need to subscribe basically to an events and start looking at them. So to do that. What we can do is create an event handler. So we're going to create our new event handler 
And the thing with the event handle is, is we can use it for a lot of different things. Um, just forgive me for a second here. I've got some of the code that I want on another page. Because we'll also use this code for some other things in a little while. Equals event handler new. Now we want this event handler to handle an event and we want it to handle events dot dead. Alright, so if something dies we want it to be handled by this event function and then we're going to create a function called event handler on event dead event data and that's why we put this end here so within here we're going to check what what is sending the event so we look for the unit name so if event data dot i and i unit name is equal to our run not ninth armored one get you i uh, get What was that command we used just up here? <laughs> it's late. I'm sore. Let's get name. What a get name. Thank you. Then and so if it's if the event dead for these guys. So if these guys are reported dead, then we're going to do this. And the next thing we want is this, because this is going to give us our x, y coordinates that we're going to need for um, storing some stuff. Though that seems to be x and y from bullseye, so it may not work how I want it to. So we, instead, we're going to cheat. We want this to work properly. So we're going to just make a little new zone here. Going to make it 30 feet across. We're going to put it there. We're going to call it that move inf2 zone. So if the ninth armor is killed, then we want to create as we want to store a local so this because we're only using it here we can make a local value and we call it our uh, move to zone equals zone new zone name and we're going to make we're going to look for that so that gives us an old zone now we want to create another local called cold and it's going to equal zone new uh zone our sorry move to zone we want to get coordinate and it's going to give us a coordinate that so it's storing where that zone is and we're going to then you then turn around and do iran inf um, route ground two. We're going to route it to coord at sp 
speed, and I believe speed is in kilometres per hour. Yep. So we want them to move at six kilometres an hour, and then our formation. Now, the formation is a string; it's optional. You don't have to put it. Um, just like you don't have to put a delay in, so we can just use. this. We're going to ask them to move in a V formation. You can actually randomize this up. Um, we're just going to have it in a V and we want them to do it after um, 30 seconds. So this gives us our event. What to do and it should route these down. Um, and the other thing we're going to have happen, of course, is if these guys are destroyed, we want a blue unit in here. These guys are going to be just not going to be a big unit. They're not going to be an armored column or anything like that because otherwise they could roll in. This is just going to be a um, light infantry column type deal. So we're going to have probably some Humvees here. Um, so we're going to have these guys. And they're going to be on the road facing this way. We've got a couple here that we can do too, so we're going to put one, two, then the third one's going to be a Humvee with a tow missile launcher. Our fourth one's going to be back to these guys. So this is our small, so this is going to be um, West Rangers, we'll just call it, we'll just say this is a Ranger column. They're going to be holding here and if this group's destroyed then they're going to push forwards to here. So we're going to create a another zone. We're going to make it literally like one foot across. Not 16 feet, it's the smallest and this is going to be Ranger Waypoint 1. So, we've got Ranger Waypoint 1. So if this lot's dead, we're going to come up here, we're going to call US Ranger Vehicles equals Group Find by Name US Ranger and again we're going to have we're basically just going to reuse the move to zone but we, and the cord, but we're going to overwrite them. So move to zone equals zone new. Uh, I think it was range away point one. Yep. Coord equals move to zone. Get coordinate. And then. US Ranger vehicles mo um, route ground on road because we want these guys to go on the road and we want them to move to the cord. They're going to move at a speed of 30 kilometers an hour. They're going to delay for 30 seconds. It's, uh, we'll actually have these guys delay for 60. And if they go off road, we want them to stay in, I believe it's line. Um, actually, uh, so we'll use off road. 
you can actually see the names so these are basically the names that you can enter so we off-road is actually what we wanted it will make it a line a stern so that's that now we need a way of actually killing <laughs> these units to test this and to do this there's a couple of ways we can do it we can just script it to kill it after a certain amount of time kind of like what we did up here with to start the units rolling um, the other thing we want to do is so this is five uh, five minutes and 30 minutes because we know that's working now so what we're going to do is we're just going to cre quickly create a quick scheduler that will run a minute into everything and tell us that and basically blow up that unit um, the other thing we want to do is have the US range of vehicles send a message to blue Duration will be 15, name will be So that now how do we make the scheduler? Fairly easy, we've got scheduler new scheduler object function scheduler argument start ran, stop randomize scheduler object's going to be nil scheduler function we're just going to make a new one called function and arguments not going to have any so we can actually do this it's going to start 60 seconds it's not going to repeat it's not going to thing and all that can go away And we've got an unexpected symbol, we've got an extra. No, we don't, we've got. We've also got an extra comma. So, in here, what we're going to do simply for the moment is run. And we're actually looking for the wrong one, so ninth armored one destroy. It should be ninth armored one. So a minute in, we're going to destroy thing, and we're just going to send a message. We're just going to put send an, a, me a message into the log, saying, "Iran ninth armored." one should be gone okay so with that all done let's come back over here tutorial open okay file save flight fly mission now something else you'll notice um, happens to when you load in to a mission as game master or even just as somebody in the mission and hit F10 is wherever the mission was saved when you were in the mission editor that's where your F10 map will default to so if you want a big wide view it's always a good idea to zoom out um, or the like or into at least into the battle space that you want to be done. So we're at 14 seconds at the moment. We're going to um, bring up G Logger 
which we've we'll forgotten to do here. So drag this over. Try not to forget to um, remove it. We're going to make certain we can't see any glaring scripting errors popping up. None so far. We should have actually also probably, while we're scripting, added a message in that can show up in the uh, in here to tell us if the events triggered properly. But we should hopefully trigger correctly. There's one minute. There goes that event. But for some reason, um, none of our None of our, our event handler didn't seem to trigger properly. So we need to write some debug code to see what's going on. So let's go do that. We'll leave this running just in case. So these guys should certainly have started moving. Let's come back here and see what we messed up. So our event handler should definitely be handling events, but we need to know if it's handling events. So we do base E arguments. If we're gonna go event handler was called and what we're gonna do here if you forgive me for a moment, because somebody, like I said, somebody else has given me some code and it's a lot easier for me to check it for some some information I need. If it's there, if not, then which is not. Okay, so if we're just going to say event handle was ca called um, event ini unit unit name is and then we're going to go comment event data dot i and i unit name I believe I believe that's right and I don't need to put a bracket behind them yeah we'll find out because this will put a note into the um into the log. So I'm going to leave that up for the moment. We're going to come here, we're going to do this, and we're going to speed this up a little bit. We're going to set this actually for 30 seconds. Again, open tutorial. Okay, file, save, flight, fly mission, start. Okay, fly it and let's go look at our log. So everything's spawned in, we're four seconds in. We've got no errors up here, which means the script is loaded properly. It's now spawned in all of our units for our parking spots and all that stuff. So we're about to hit 30 seconds in, which is when that unit should be destroyed. And for some reason, our event handler is not trigger firing. So let's see if I can't work out what the heck I am messing up, because otherwise we're going to have to do it another way. So if you give me a second, I'm actually going to have a look at where I've done an event handler that I know works. So if we look at this set, I've got an event handler in here, which works here. Um, 
it's a world event handler. Okay, let's um, let's go look at a, a script that Pikes gave me um, just now, and we can see if if and where I've messed up. So. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pull this. So we may end up doing it this way because for some reason, yeah, this doesn't seem to be functioning as it should um, but we'll just quickly there's another script I just want to quickly have a look at and there's and trust me there is no shame in looking at somebody else's script if something your if they've done something that works and what you're doing doesn't But his code's looking exactly the same as mine, which is what's got me a little confused here. So just give me a moment, guys, because I need to check some stuff, and we'll, I'll return once I puzzle through this with the answer. Actually, I think I know what may be the problem. Um, because we're destroying it, not killing it. So I don't think the dead event is actually ever firing. Because of how we're doing this. So we're actually going to take a lovely little option that um, Pikes has in his script here. Which is this coord explosion option and we're going to use it as part of this so instead of using destroy we're going to go local local um, explosion cord equals Iran uh, not Iran if you yeah, uh, Iran ninth armored one get coordinate on the group. Now if we look up coordinate um, helps if I spell and sometimes the, co the annoying part with coordinate is doesn't actually always give us the context sensitive stuff so we're going to um, see if I've still got the moose documentation up here so we're going to type moose go to the documentation we're going to come down here and we're going to find core, core dot point that's what I believe it's under. Move this for the moment. We're going to look at coordinate. I don't see coordinate explode there because so we need to. He's definitely has coordinate. Get land height. Ah, here we go. I missed it. Explosion. Right there. So it's the intensity in kilograms TNT. 
Okay. Well, it's going to put it here. We're just going to try. Fine. We'll see if this works. Ninth. Um, sorry. Explosion. Coord. Um, it was. Do it with six thousand. Okay, let's try that. Let's see if that works. And if push comes to shove, we can always actually just adjust this for the moment to test that the scripting works. So we're going to go F7 on these guys. Because I've never actually watched a coordinate get blown up. The other one, of course, is... Damn it. We want this because it could be it could be an error. I could have typed something out wrong. No, oh, there we go. We destroyed some, but we didn't destroy all. Um, rather large boom, but we didn't destroy all of them. So, quit again. Mission editor. We destroyed this group, but not this group. So, for the moment, what we'll do... So we'll leave that one right, that one, because that one seemed to work rather ex <laughs> rather well for down there. This group, we're just going to put in a trigger here. Once new, and we should be able to do the basically the exact same thing. Explode unit. Oh, we could do an explode unit. I think that'll work. Um, and we, but we'll need the actual unit names. So. We're going to go nine, 9 dash 1 2 9 dash 1 1 9 dash 1 0 9 dash 9 9 8 So, back into this trigger, it'll have removed the one that we just made because... Oh, okay, no it didn't. Okay, so we want... Why is the nines? Yeah, so we want orbit 9-1. We're just going to clone this a bunch of times. Apparently I missed six in that list. Okay, we're going to have this happen. Put 
time more than 10 seconds. So, save that. Flights fly mission. Start. Let's hope that it works this time. Because we're, we're at, almost at the hour mark already. And we've barely gotten anywhere. So there goes all those units. And okay, actually I've messed up anyway because So this did trigger but it didn't trigger how we wanted it to. Um, because I messed up in the scripting. So, this is sending a unit name. You'll notice this is actually unit name. And what we actually want is a group name, not a unit name. Um, and if we come up here, I think I may even have... So we want this. Which is... Which should give us the group name. So we should be able to, and the way we can make, we can get the documentation and the like for this too, is we want to copy this section. Come back down here. So now we can do this. So we want to change this to Let's have a look, if we go event data, what options do we do have? We've got DCS group name. Or well, we can just do INI group name. So this is what we actually wanted to... to see. So if the group name is this, then we want to double check if the Iran 9th Armoured is, is alive equals false. So if they're all dead, then we want to do this. And, okay. Let's go file, save, uh, file, open this one, okay, file, save, flights, fly mission, start. Okay, flight. So they've all gone, we've had the event trigger. Um, it shows up in the list and it's actually triggering so it's telling me that it's this. But... But looks of it, this still didn't trigger. It means I'm still messing something up here. Um, I'm going to pause just for a moment so that this recording doesn't get any longer.
Okay, so what I've worked out is happening is this triggers and we never actually step into this section because at the at the moment it's happening that quick that there's still a live here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to copy this code and paste it up into this function up here. And instead we're going to tell this that we want to schedule a new nil check night alive want to start one second after um, and the other thing we're going to do is set um, So, so long as this is report, we're going to still have this, but we're going to say if it's true, then one second after do this check. And we're going to see if that works. Um, and we're just going to put in a debug item call here checker okay let's see if this works so we need to wait the 10 seconds or so bring up the log here so if you zoom in you can see it also move it over here so they're all gone and as you can see if we scroll down here these are fi falling in and there's been a call to the ninth checker boom And we're still got a problem. Okay, I need to double check something here because this should have fired. Something's not working. Um, for some reason, the ninth is not reporting dead, and I need to see why. Okay, so I have worked out my mistake, and it was a mistake. We did it by running a couple of debug functions and the like. So what we want to do here is does not equal true. So if it does not equal true. Um, because it returns nil if it's uh, if it's does not exist anymore. Oh, I forgot to actually I forgot that, so I've just wasted like ten minutes or more than that. Anyway, let's go run this and see if I'm right. If not, we'll. Stop the video and we'll start with this next time because we're at almost an hour. You'll notice I've shifted this over to be just a single unit for the moment. So yeah, it's actually reported now that it's dead, 
and we can see that the group is moving forwards. So these guys will move forwards in a minute and these guys should start moving as well. Because we do not have any errors happening in the log. See, so off these guys go, they're going to start. They'll form up and then move. And then in a moment these guys will do the same thing. Yeah, so off these guys go. So I'll see you in the next video.